Let's do a little word association. Say titanium, M390. And you're like, ah, separate bank accounts. Okay, well, that's true, but it also means I'll be reviewing the Benchmade 765 or the mini titanium monologue to the squares who call Benchmades by their full names. So while you contemplate unsubscribing because I haven't done any cheap stuff since October, cool down for a second while we check out the overall length. The blade length. It's $300 cutting edge. It's opulent handle and grip area. It's fancy spine thickness, handle thickness, and it's lightweight. Now, I promise I'll do cheap stuff again, but considering I own more Gonzos than any other knife, I'm a bit 440 seed out. So please put away your 440 C pitchfork. Now, expensive knives often have expensive blade steels, and this one uses Buller M390. M390 is a highly corrosion resistant super steel, but we don't call that stainless steel anymore because that sounds like something found in a peasant's blade. Its corrosion resistance is attributed to its high chromium content, so it's obviously marketed at people who leave their knives outside in the rain for days on end so they can blame it on someone else. The blade is just your standard drop point with a high flat grind and a luxurious satin finish like um, most of the Benchmades I review here, and also like beds and hourly motels. Now I don't review those. The blade is deployed by a thumb stud, and by golly, it's smooth and quick. The blade pivots on a ball bearing system, so fluid it almost feels assisted, or near magic as Benchmade says, kind of like David Blaine. Just a light press slightly downward and forward on the thumb stud, flicks it open, click, clickety click, click, click. You don't have to put as much force on it as an assisted, so if your idea of a day at work is to basically flip open your knife all day and get paid for it, well, it's less fatiguing on your tender, fancy thumbs. And you're like, well, you need lotion. Touche. The handle is made from two pieces of titanium with a matte finish on it that begins to pick up pocket wear um, pretty quickly. It's not damaged and it's not like scratched down layers, but its matte finish starts to get glossy streaks when it gets scratched. It feels like an anodized surface, so it's smooth but offers friction. You, you get what I'm saying? The matte gray handle is open back and held together with three stainless steel barrel washers to cut down on weight. Again, this is just a nice light folder at a hair over three ounces. The blade is locked into place by a frame lock that's fairly easy to disengage, which brings me to one of two slight kind of uh, issues I have with the blade. It fits in my hand well and I don't have to crowd my fingers on the handle much, but up front there's some thin machining where the frame lock hits the tang. It looks like it's designed to prevent over travel inward so the inside of the lock doesn't touch the inside of the frame, but then ahead of that, there's also this other tiny part machined out. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it's there. It's a little unique, but I'm sure there's a reason that I'm not um, seeing because I don't make knives. This is kind of sharp, and it becomes a hot spot into your finger with moderate use. Its thinness adds to the sharpness. When blades start creeping up into car payment territory, I feel like they're a little more discerning people looking at this, so I figured I'd bring it up. This isn't a $20 knife. Anyway, it doesn't kill it for me. It just isn't a hard use blade. Despite being a super steel, like people really use those for hard use anyway, instead of pocket, you know, bling. The rest of the handle is nice though, and I ain't got no problems with it other than that little sharp spot up front. Anyway, finally the last area, the pocket clip. It's beautiful and made out of titanium, nicer than most pocket clips, and it matches the knife wonderfully. Sorry, I'm running out of adjectives. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of give to it. I couldn't call it really bendable either because of the thickness to it. It is a tight grip on your pocket and you're gonna have a hard time pulling it if you put it in your pocket if your pockets are a little thicker. It seems like it'll be tight for the long haul though so it shouldn't wear out because of how thick it is. Although it can be a little hard to get in some pockets. I prefer springy pocket clips that retain their grippiness and shape like on my Zebra Lite. You can bend it outward but it always snaps back into place with force. I also like my Endura 4's pocket clips too because those have held up long term other than of course the paint, but I don't really care about paint, I care about functionality. The clip is positionable, tip up or tip down on the right side of the knife only. As it comes from the factory, it's blade at the rear, tip up in my right pocket, which is probably the fastest deployment for righties for this blade. 
Also, it's not a deep carry clip either. You get about half an inch to an inch hanging out of the top of your pocket. It also has a lanyard hole in the rear, but it doesn't have a full metal sleeve like on my paramilitary too. Now, I really don't care because I don't use lanyards on knives or flashlights. Detent on this knife is nice and strong right at the end as the ball bearing pops into the blade detent. You close it nearly all the way and then it snaps into place. It doesn't snap early. Blade retention when closed is about as good as you can get because no matter how hard I pop it and try to fling it open, it doesn't come out. So I've been carrying this knife for a few weeks now and I like, it. oh, oh, sorry, let's uh, cut up some cardboard. All these damn Amazon boxes laying around for plastic crap for my kid to play with. Uh, I mean, that's why we buy knives now, right? To open boxes, right? It won't become my main everyday carry, but it's a good rotation alternative. It's the first blade I've used with M390, so ask me a little down the road about long-term edge retention. Now, out of the box, it was sharp AF, and it's a nice looking blade. And I'm not sure, but I think at some point, knives just become too expensive. I'm not sure if this is one of those. This is just my opinion. If you'd like to hear me take that half-baked statement and form it into a coherent statement about knives in general over the long term, you might be a little disappointed. But subscribe to my channel anyway. Follow me on Instagram when I post pictures of my junk. I mean, I mean knife junk, everyday carry junk. Uh, give my video a thumbs up if you're feeling in the holiday spirit. Also leave a comment, etc., etc., etc. Thanks for watching.